Ladies and gentlemen, it's time to address and debunk another libtard talking point, the so-called Clinton budget surpluses of the late 90s. I'll have all the relevant material off the, on the right side as per usual, and I urge you to check that out. I have figures from both the government printing office and the U.S. Treasury, which differ slightly, but both come to the same conclusion. The national debt increased every fiscal year Clinton was in office, and I have to thank my friend Sorian, S-O-R-R-I-A-N, for pointing this out to me many months ago. First, let's look at real spending increases minus payments on the national debt from Eisenhower through George W. Bush. The reason I exclude interest payments on the national debt is because some big spenders like Bush lucked out with lower interest rates, which partially veiled their big spending activities. High interest rates and runaway inflation punished others like Reagan when he assumed office to clean up the mess Carter and his Democrat Congress left. Here are the real annual spending increases minus interest payments on the national debt. Eisenhower, negative 0.4%. JFK, 4.6%. LBJ, 5.7%. Nixon, 2.9%. Ford, 2.7%. Carter, Jim Carter, 3.2%. The old peanut farmer. Ronaldus Magnus, 1.9%. George Herbert Walker Bush, 2%. Clinton, 1.9%. And George W. Bush, 5.6%. Bush was the biggest spender since LBJ, and the only ones who had it at 2% or lower were Eisenhower, Reagan, Clinton, and George Herbert Walker Bush. You'll have to excuse my phone ringing. However, liberals still cling to the Clinton budget surplus myth because it makes for better criticism of Bush's big spending policies and Obama's continuation of that. According to figures from the U.S. Treasury, the national debt at the end of fiscal year 97 was $5.413 trillion. End of fiscal year 98, it was $5.526 trillion. End of fiscal year 99, it was 5.656 trillion. Didn't increase much, but it did a little bit. End of fiscal year 2000, it was 5.674 trillion. Lastly, Clinton's last fiscal year he presided over, fiscal year 2001, the national debt at the end of that fiscal year was 5.807 trillion. You cannot have a budget surplus when the national debt increases every fiscal year. I've had some liberals say there's a difference. There is not. If the national debt is increasing every year, you do not have a budget surplus. That's idiotic. Nonsensical. But what do you expect? This type of budget gamesmanship is still being played out as Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac's liabilities are not on the budget. Some in Congress are attempting to remedy that. And that will make Obama, Hussein Obama's fiscal year 2010 budget deficit seems smaller than it really is. For the record, Bush was just short of adding a trillion to the national debt in fiscal year 2008, but he outdid himself the last fiscal year he presided over, fiscal year 2009, which ended September 30th, 2009. The national debt went from 10.124 trillion to 11.910 trillion. Thank you, George, and good riddance. And again, there was no Clinton budget surplus. Sorry. Sorry, Lib. So if someone tells you, comes up to you and says, Oh, but Clinton had a, he had a, uh, uh, some billion dollar surplus, and Bush turned it into a deficit. Uh, you can just.